mute and go off and it's just this party now. Thanks, eh, Annika. Bye. Okay, we recording. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning again to the uh, ASPARSA members and uh, also to my uh, Minerals Council uh, colleagues. Uh, welcome to this uh, this meeting, engagement, important engagement that we're having today. Um, I am the, the senior executive responsible for safety at uh, Minerals Council. So uh, I will be uh, leading us in the uh, in the discussion today, but uh, you will see that we've got a whole uh, multidisciplinary team that is going to assist in this regard. In terms of the uh, agenda, we always start with a safety and health share and also with a um, diversity and inclusion share. So um, can I just ask whether from the ASPASA members, whether there's any health and safety share that you you want to, to give us this morning? Just uh, you can just put your hand up. Um, I'm looking at the hands. OK, I don't see any from the ASPASA members. Can I just ask from my Minerals Council uh, colleagues any Health and safety share for for us this morning. Katlejo. Thank you, Sister. Uh, morning, colleagues. I'll probably just give an update in terms of how we are doing on the safety performance side. Um, as of the first of February, um, we have had um, five fatalities uh, in comparison to four fatalities during the same period last year. This is a total of 25% uh, regression. And I think the main commodities affected is gold with four fatalities, as well as platinum with uh, accounting for the fifth one. And in terms of the injuries, um, as of the first, we had recorded um, 52 uh, injuries compared to 115, I mean 151, sorry, during the same period last year. And in terms of uh, the breakdown, uh, other commodities which are SPASA members are part of recorded six fatalities as of the first. Uh, compared to 30 during during the same period last year, and in terms of the, the main agencies, um, <coughs> excuse me, from the six, three were from machinery, and the remaining three were from uh, general classified types of um, uh, injury. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Katlejo, for uh, sharing that uh, with us. Then, in terms of a diversity and uh, inclusion share, um, again, just uh, asking first from the ASPASA members, uh, any share on your, your part? If you could just raise your hand. Leticia, good, good morning. morning. Um, just a reminder that we need some women and mining representation in the Gauteng, Ukosi and Marufung um, uh, Women and Mining Committee. We've got from AfriSAM and AfriMAP, and we would really like the other members also to um, put their hands up to sit on this committee, please. Thank you very much for that, uh, Leticia. You are very uh, important initiative uh, also from the Minerals Council uh, side to, to enhance uh, gender diversity. Um, in terms of the agenda, Stanford, can I just ask you uh, confirm the, uh, the agenda for us, um, the one that we're going to use today? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sita. Um, and good morning, uh, everyone on the call. Um, the agenda that we send, um, which which says from eight to ten, um, we have changed somewhat with not, not necessarily the the substantive issues, but just in terms of the timing. As you know, we are now having the meeting from nine to ten, so we will we will then go into the contextualization where it's a, a will talk around uh, that and then the third item will then be a presentation from the minerals council multidisciplinary team on the tmm regulation implementation readiness 
And then we will have um, item number four, which is Q&A, but also including a discussion around the TMM population issue and also any readiness uh, um, from or any readiness input from from uh, ASPASA members in terms of where they are now and then a closure for for of the meeting. Thank you, Sitin. Thank you very much, uh, Stanford, for that. Um, so with that um, we get straight into the agenda. I'm going to uh, switch my video off and just provide some context uh, uh, comments, and then I'll ask the team to to share the presentation. Um, so if I can just make a couple of uh, comments um, to start. First of all, of course, to thank you for uh, for your time and your attendance. Um, from our perspective, the, the purpose of the meeting is twofold. Uh, we wanted to engage with ASPASA specifically on the implementation of the, the TMM regulations and in particular the collision avoidance uh, systems. And we want to ensure that um, all the key role players um, are actually aligned on the journey that we are going to take. And you'll see that uh, throughout this presentation, our approach to this matter is uh, multidisciplinary, holistic, and also risk-faced. Uh, I think we, as Katlejo has mentioned, we, we have to appreciate that we, we are in a context in, in which uh, the number of fatalities um, have been increasing over the last year. And for the, the RCO Zero Harm Forum, and specifically the Kumbule Kaya strategy, uh, the elimination of fatalities remains an absolute priority and uh, therefore um, is, uh, this is an un unacceptable trajectory that we're on um, at the moment. Just uh, to give you a brief update on some of the uh, decisions that our board and the CEO Zero Harm Forum have already been making. Uh, the first one is that we are taking a dual strategy approach uh, to this uh, this matter, where on the one hand we we do the advocacy um, as we normally do, but in this instance, um, because of the the nature of the collision avoidance systems systems, uh, we also combining that with an investment in in supporting our members through this. Uh, um, challenging journey. The second decision that the uh, the, the CEOs have made is uh, that we need to accelerate the adoption of the collision avoidance uh, systems. And the third one is that while while we do this acceleration, we have to adopt what we call the low hanging fruit that has been ident uh, identified from an analysis of all the fatalities over the last ten years. And for Asparsa members specifically, this is the um, the low hanging fruit. There is the traffic management leading practice for surface operations, and um, I know a number of you are um, actually involved with that uh, that uh, process. Just from the uh, feedback with the meeting from the meeting with the chief inspector of mines. Of course, he's uh, very concerned uh, about the uh, the performance and that we continue to have uh, fatalities, injuries in our our industry. But I think more important for this conversation today is that he expressed his deep frustration over the fact that um, you know we've been dealing with this TMM regulations for over ten years, and every time it seems that we're just requesting for additional time and uh, we don't actually get to the implementation of the technology while there are still people uh, losing their lives. From the union's uh, side, uh, very similar uh, sentiments, also very concerned and uh, also urging all the parties to see what we can do to, to accelerate the, um, the adoption of these uh, collision avoidance uh, systems. Before we get into the presentation and the discussion, I just want to emphasize that, you know, we, we're going to ask for information um, from the ASPASA members, particularly on your TMM uh, population and, 
and readiness in terms of the collision avoidance uh, systems. And I just want to emphasize um, the point that uh, if we're not getting this information, it will be very difficult, if not impossible, for us to, to advocate also on, uh, on your behalf um, and in your uh, interests. So colleagues, that's just a few uh, contextual um, um, observations that I wanted to make and I've, I can then ask Ntsiki um, to just share the presentation with us um, that we can can go through this. Ntsiki, are you uh, are you loading? Thank you. Thank you very much. If you could just move to the uh, the first slide. I see the uh, this the connection uh, is just uh, just okay. It's just a bit uh, slow in the morning. So I just wanted to, to emphasize our commitment. Um, we remain absolutely committed to, uh, to zero harm. We continue to invest in this, uh, what is a complex uh, technology and also globally leading on the collision avoidance systems. So these individual uh, companies, uh, of course, are investing in that. That's where most of the, uh, the funding comes. But also as the Minerals Council, we are also investing in this uh, is in this matter as part of the, the dual strategy that I mentioned. So far, uh, the Minerals Council has invested about 10 million uh, rand on this uh, issue in support of our members. And um, we're planning to invest another 20 million rand over the next uh, few years to continue that process. We remain committed to work together with the uh, the other stakeholders um, to adopt the collision avoidance systems as quickly as possible. And as I mentioned throughout, we refer to a holistic risk uh, phased approach. We have to strike a balance between saving lives and saving livelihoods. And uh, hence, we are very concerned about re regulating the, the um, collision avoidance systems if it is not ready for full implementation. Having said that, um, in the meantime, um, we are committed to adopt you know, measures that are ready for us to eliminate transport accidents. Like I mentioned, in the case of Asparsa members, that would be um, the traffic management for surface uh, surface operations. Can I hand back to uh, the team to take us through the next uh, next slides, uh, please? Thank you, Sita. I think as you highlighted in terms of our commitment to, to various initiatives, what we see is that in 2012 we introduced the proximity detection system both in an underground in a surface environment, and what this graph illustrates is that post the introduction of that initiative, there was a significant improvement in terms of the trends observed in that area. And in 2017, we launched the traffic management leading practice, which is highly applicable to, to our SPASA members. And this was also aimed at looking at um, prevention of uh, collisions in, in the surface environment. And I think if we look at the bullet on 2017, it will be more applicable to, to the next slide. If we look at uh, the, the fatalities that we analyzed in the last five years, one of the key things we acknowledge we acknowledge is that CARES does bring an opportunity in terms of improving our, our safety performance. But one of the key things is that we need to do CARES together with traffic management. And if you look at the surface environment, we, an, we analyzed a significant number of fatalities. And what we found in the surface environment was that through the principles introduced by traffic management, we could have prevented 10 fatalities versus one which could have been prevented by, by CARES. And if you look at the underground environment, um, from 11 fatalities, uh, CARES was able to prevent uh, six fatalities. And when you look at the other scenarios, um, uh, traffic management would have uh, prevented um, 
fi fatality. So one of the key things is to say that while we work, while we walk the journey towards uh, adopting CAS, traffic management still remains a critical pillar in terms of our, uh, the control of, of risks that arise as a result of our uh, trackless mobile equipment. Katlehu, yes, um, can you just uh, pause for a moment? Um, I don't know about other people on the call, but on my screen, um, the slide that is showing is still the commitment uh, slide. And Siki, I don't know if um, or if it is just me that uh, has that uh, problem. It's not only you, Sita, it's the same on me as well. Well, I see the opportunity to improve slides, so that's uh, slide number five. OK, can I just can I just ask from the Esparza members, can all of you see that slide number five? Yes, I can. No, I can't see it. I can see it. I can see it. Avon. I even see you've got your hand up. Are you are you able to see it, Ivan and, and Anthony? Uh, Anthony, I oh. can't see it. Yeah, I see us now. Sorry, it says can't display content. There's a problem displaying the content. Has anybody got any advice on uh, because it seems some see it and some uh, don't see it? Anybody, in, any advice on what you could do? I'll, I'll just reload. Thank you. Zitza, we will share the presentation later with us too. So if we do miss, um, I can't see slide five either, Nico. Yeah. Okay, now I can see slide uh, slide five. And I hope yep. others can. So do. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, carry on. Sorry about that uh, interruption. No, not a problem, Peter. But I think what you, what the, the last slide that we wanted to highlight, um, it's fine if you can move to the next one. The last slide that we wanted to highlight, and I think it's also applicable to ASPASA members, was to try and understand in terms of our transport and machinery which one are the biggest contributors to fatalities and which ones are the biggest contributor to, to injuries. And if you look at the graph, you will notice that, you'll notice that um, in, in the fatality space, our trucks, our LHDs and our whole trucks are the biggest contributors to, to the fatalities as well as RBE, which is not necessarily applicable to you guys. And on, on the injury side, yet again, our whole trucks, our LHDs and the RBEs are the biggest contributor to, to our overall um, Thank you. Uh, thank you, Katleho. Um, with what Sita mentioned earlier, uh, just on the previous graph, uh, after that analysis, uh, a, an, an approach was taken to uh, apply some low hanging fruits. However, along with the global community, South Africa also adopted the use of the nine levels of control for vehicle interaction safety. These were derived by the Earth Moving Equipment Safety Roundtable, or EMIST, which is a global um, uh, mobile equipment safety body. Um, if you look at the first two levels, they refer to improving the design of mines and the, and the TMM itself. The second four levels um, look at uh, procedures to improve operational discipline around the use of TMM, while the last three, which we have commonly um, started calling the technology portion, refer to technologies that are used to alert the operator of an imminent collision. And if uh, the operator does not take any action to avoid it, then the technology must intervene to avoid a collision. Um, now, in the South African context, we have the mandatory TMMCOP that states some of the requirements for the design and operation of mines for the safe movement of TMM. Coupled with that, we, we have the MOSH traffic management leading practice and underground technical guide, uh, which describe the, con they describe the controls that address the mine design portion and the operation portion for the safe movement of persons and TMM. Level seven and eight uh, refer to PDS or proximity detection, uh, where, where there's detection of 
eminent coalitions and warning to the operator, which the industry actually introduced as a leading practice way back in 2012. And these were subsequently included in the regulations in 2015. The last uh, level of control, level nine, refers to the suspended uh, TMM regulations. And, and these require a technology that can essentially take control of the machine's braking system. If an operator, like I said, if, if they fail to, to respond to the warnings for whatever reasons. So in all intents, uh, uh, colleagues, it's important to firmly establish the controls in a phased manner, um, since the controls that are higher up, uh, level one to six, have a massive uh, impact on the turnout of, of or the design and functioning of level seven to nine. Um, and um, if you contrast it to the popular hierarchy of controls, you'll see that level one and two speak to eliminating and substituting the, the hazard. Um, levels three to six uh, speak to substitution and administrative controls. And then the last one, uh, the reactive portion, is actually the engineering controls, which should be activated if all the other levels have failed. So we're talking about readiness and, and, and in this space of CAS, but what actually are we referring to? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch briefly on technology readiness, um, manufacturing readiness, uh, that is now to be able to supply the entire industry, and then the ability to install, repair, and maintain um, the, the, the equipment once it's installed. Uh, that portion will be covered by uh, per, uh, Mr. Malachi and then operational readiness as well, is what we're talking about when we talk about readiness. Now, when we're talking about the CAS system, we need to all align. If you look at the blue portion there, as the system is made up of subsystems, um, which is now the proximity detection system, the ability for the machines to see each other or sense each other. And then you have an interface or an ability of the PDS to talk to the machine. Uh, and then you have that machine controller. Then the machine controller must further take uh, charge of the machine's braking mechanism. So it's a system that is made up of four subsystems. But in those uh, four subsystems, if you look at the bottom orange portion, for PDS suppliers, we currently counted about 24 PDS suppliers. Um, for machines, uh, type, uh, or mach uh, TMMs, uh, OEMs, we've counted just over 120 OEMs. For the interface portion or the third party integrators, we have counted about uh, plus minus five uh, companies that are able to do that interface. Now, the complexity of the system is compounded by the fact that for each OEM, uh, um, they have different machine types, different machine models, which just uh, makes, you, makes you see that the combination uh, becomes exponential. So it's a quite complicated uh, uh, system. So for us to say technology is ready, we've adopted the European Commission definition of technology readiness, which has also has nine levels, but these are called TRL levels, not vehicle interaction levels like previously discussed. It goes all the way from TRL one, which is um, just concept concept phase uh, and uh, inception, all the way to TRL nine, which speaks about full commercial application. Now in a regulatory space where you need everyone to be able to comply, you must be at uh, technology readiness level nine with your, with your subsystems um, so that everyone is able to comply. Not only should the technology be ready, but you must also be ready on a manufacturing scale to be able to supply the entire industry should, you be, should, you, should the regulations be promulgated uh, tomorrow. But manufacturing as well also has its own uh, manufacturing levels, right from um, the feasibility of whether that technology that you, you, you conceived, is it possible to manufacture the components and subcomponents, all the way to full rate production of uh, the entire unit or its subcomponents, so that if there's failure in the field, you are able to supply the subcomponents to, to effect the repairs that are necessary. Now, in the, invest, one, in, in the investment that the industry has done, um, there was a sponsorship by the Man Health and Safety Council 
to the University of Pretoria to be able to conduct tests at technology readiness levels four and five, which is the laboratory scale. Now for surface machines, the, the University of Pretoria did conduct tests on 10 suppliers of uh, PDS systems. They tested them against the criteria on the left-hand side, which we call scenarios, um, you know, where, when vehicles are coming head on or when a vehicle is going around the corner. And then those level seven, level eight, and level nine in the yellow, orange, and red at the top indicate warning, uh, detection, warning, and slow down and stop. You will notice that the colors inside the blocks, green, red, and orange, indicate the number of uh, suppliers that did pass a particular test. Now, while they did pass, um, some 100% uh, of them did pass head-on scenarios, you'll notice that it's everyone is actually below the speed of 10 kilometers per hour. And there's not much uh, research done above 10 kilometers per hour. And most of the scenarios still remain red, which means that um, the technology is not yet ready at that level. Now, in in all collecting all this information, we have picked up that um, not all um, machine OEMs are collaborating to the same level as others uh, when it comes to partnering with uh, PDS suppliers to come up with solutions. Uh, and then older vehicles actually um, have no solutions or little solutions in terms of uh, the ability to slow down and stop. This information, uh, colleagues, was pulled from the TMM population that we requested. And as Sita mentioned earlier, um, we've had responses from uh, middle tier to large scale mines, but not really from the ASPASA uh, related group of mines. And we would really like to see what kind of vehicles you use and uh, what kind of technologies are available out there to be able to be applied on your machines should, should the regulations be promulgated. I'll now hand over to Stanford to carry on with the skills required uh, portion. Uh, thank, thank you. I think Mustak is in, in, the, in the call, if you can take it, Mustak. Stan, thank you very much. Good morning, colleagues. Um, one of the other areas as Nsiki has spoken about is the capacity readiness in terms of installation, repair and maintenance. And what we've done is we've done a snapshot initial analysis and this is what we've come up with. What we found is that initial installation in terms of the system is typically outsourced at this stage. And if you're doing it at the organization uh, individually, then they can do three to five installations per week. However, for continuous installation, repair and maintenance of your CAS, the scarce skills of artisans, um, which is the diesel mechanics and auto electricians, those are the skills that you require predominantly for doing IRM. What we found is to do continuous IRM, you probably need about five artisans per your 100 machines, which means to do all of the machinery in the sector, you'd probably need about 4,225 artisans in the fields of diesel mechanics and auto electricians. We need to also understand that the training period for the artisans is somewhere between three to four years. And if rollout of these regulations happens and it needs to be in place within the next two to three years, this is one of the challenges that we probably would be sitting with and we need to understand how to work around it. Currently, if you look at the sector itself and you look at what they're producing in terms of artisans per year in these specific fields, you're looking at about 170 artisans that are produced per year in this specific field. And next slide, please. So we also looked at what do we currently have in terms of auto electricians in the uh, sector as well as diesel mechanics. What we found is we have auto electricians about close to 800 of them in the industry at the moment. However, with these auto electricians, let me say they are not all doing installation, repair and maintenance of CAS. They have other outputs that they're performing. And if we want to move them towards the CAS, then we need to turn around and give them skills of sensing technology, which they do not have at the moment. And then of course, we need to ensure that the computerized equipment skills are also added. Pretty much, you know, auto electricians work in the space of plug and play, but they would have to have higher skills than just a normal plug and play aspect. 
Then you also have diesel mechanics, which is just under 4,000 at this stage in the industry. Once again, not many of them are utilized in the space of gas. And they predominantly would need, because they are more mechanically biased, biased in their training and development, you would need to top up them with hydraulics and engines, as well as including some electrical and digital skills in their development as well. Another important note is that nine months of technology specific training is probably required in terms of the different systems that they would be implementing or adding in. We also need to note the concern that the intellectual property of these various providers of the systems is also a challenge. So one would have to work around how do you actually secure um, the opportunity to be able to train and develop uh, these individuals whilst getting, taking cognizance of the intellectual property concerns. IRM requirements would also be different for each mining site and could also differ across the different systems and system providers. That is across these so-called care suppliers and that's one of the area that we need to also be cognizant of. I think as we go along and Zitsa mentioned this up front is we probably need to start looking at getting more information around, around the skills that we currently have and more so in the Esparza space, the skills that we have to be able to implement this. So we will be getting into contact with Esparza to get more detail in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Musto. And colleagues, it's Stanford Malachi, this site. Um, this slide shows us the extent to which we need to put effort uh, at an industry level vis-a-vis -vis a single site or a mine operation level. Um, from a location point of view, you can see that uh, a single site is very much localized, but industry is geographically uh, dispersed. And machine types, models, and, and number of machines, there could be few and small at, uh, at a single site but large numbers at um, industry level. The number of, of subsystems and, and manufacturing capacity um, could also be small at single site, but large in the industry, if, if, we, if you use uh, the, the scale of an industry. And with regard to the installation, repair and maintenance capacity, it could be within uh, capacity or current capacity at single site, but beyond uh, our current capacity at an industry level. Thank you, Nsiki. Um, so in the final analysis, our, our view is that uh, uh, overall readiness is, um, is that for technology readiness, we are not ready, uh, manufacturing readiness, for industry-wide adoption, um, we are not ready. Capacity readiness, as we have seen from what Mustak has just said, um, for especially at industry-wide adoption, we are not ready. So therefore, CAS is not ready for industry-wide adoption uh, from what we have seen so far. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Tafado Chipanguza. I'm an economist with the Minerals Council. Mind really is just to talk to the uh, our, uh, our estimate on the capital cost that it will entail to deploy the technology. So at this point, our best estimate is that the capital expenditure would be in, in, in the order of about 30 billion rand across the sector. And perhaps to put that number into context is that at present, the industry currently spends and where this expenditure would be accounted for is in the transport equipment um, side of the uh, transport equipment line and on there we currently spend in order of about six billion rand so the point really becomes that the capital expenditure is quite a substantial amount and the ongoing opex amount would be in the order of five to ten billion rand so really the the, the point becomes <clears throat> to emphasize the point that has been made about the necessity for a risk-based approach uh, and a risk phase approach is that uh, we need to be able to maintain the competitiveness um, and also at the same time capture as much of this value, which is where a lot of critical thinking is needed. Um, I'll now hand over to Sita. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you very much, uh, the Fox Force. So um, I think just in uh, in summary, if we look at what are the the impacts and the opportunities of this holistic risk phased uh, approach that we we suggesting. From a safety point of view, uh, we think it's better if we follow this approach because uh, if you do, for instance, the, the traffic management uh, up front, you could eliminate or substitute a considerable amount of your, uh, of your risk. In terms of the asset uh, utilization, whether it is uh, on the mineral side or whether it's uh, about your equipment, um, we also believe that this this approach, as we have outlined, uh, is a better one because the the significant risk is is reduced and therefore will it it will have less impact on the com competitiveness and viability of the uh, of the mines. On the capital expenditure, um, we believe if we we take this approach and first uh, look at things like traffic management and so on, we can significantly reduce the the risk and the need for actual uh, installation of uh, of this uh, technology on on all the pieces of equipment, which could be a significant reduction in capital expenditure and also in annual operational expenditure. On the skill side, um, <clears throat> if, uh, if you follow this approach, um, we believe we can do better on the skill side because we can train people locally rather than importing or people just poaching from each other, with, uh, which will just lead to an increase in the, in the labor cost. And then on localization, we also think that the, the, the holistic risk phase approach will give us an opportunity to maximize localization, lower the cost of ownership for the mines, and, and also possibly create new employment in communities to do things like installation, repair, and, and maintenance. Next slide. So in terms of the way forward that we have uh, proposed uh, to, to the different uh, stakeholders and, and um, stakeholders have supported, is that we need to establish a, a high level transport safety leadership forum, uh, which consists of all the various uh, stakeholders. Um, and its only objective should be to, to eliminate the um, fatalities and injuries from uh, from our sector, um, we're comfortable if the DMR were to play a leading role, we're willing to support in whatever way is necessary. And then um, the second uh, major bullet is that we need to develop a holistic risk phase um, collision avoidance system readiness plan. Um, that is very much what we, we're busy with. And this is also what we committed to, to provide to the uh, Chief Inspector of Mines and also to the unions um, to see what, uh, what, what is achievable and what are the, the activities that will be verifiable and responsibilities assigned and, and so on. And while we're doing that, uh, the last major bullet thing um, is in the meantime that we continue to look at all the other um, transport uh, risk redu reduction measures like uh, the traffic management that could be accelerated and, and that we will certainly monitor the progress on that because that is what our board approved that we will look at these uh, low hanging fruits in the, in the meantime. So now to uh, Stanford in terms of our request specific request to, to ASPASA, and then we will open it for discussion. Thank you, Stanford. Okay, thank you, Sitze. Um, the, the request to ASPASA members uh, or member companies that are represented here and those that may not be here today is that um, for us to develop, as the Minerals Council, to develop a credible holistic risk-faced cash readiness plan, as Sitze has identified, or or indicated, would expect or request ASPASA members to urgently, and, and we emphasize that point, um, and giving a date of 15th February as, 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 a, as a deadline on which we would want this information, to submit their TMM population information 
which will then be included in the industry risk assessment process. We have previously sent out this request through Nico's office, and we can still resend the same, same uh, template for, for this purpose. The second aspect, uh, Sita sp spoke about the, the in the meantime um, aspects. Here we, we request ASPASA member companies to implement the, what the Board of the Minerals Council has approved in relation to what you call the law hanging fruit actions, especially for surface TMM. That includes conducting a traffic flow and risk analysis and adopting the traffic management leading practice for surface operations. Um, thank you, Sita. Thank you very much, uh, Stanford, and <clears throat> also to the whole uh, whole team. I um, I now uh, open it for uh, discussion, questions, um, comments from the uh, from the Aspasa, from the Aspasa members. Leticia. And how does this whole process fit into we, what we've done with TACE? Um, because we will walk the journey with TACE for three years and all that information was gathered and submitted to that project. So must we resubmit all of that? Um, colleagues who can uh, answer that, I mean, I, I, I'll just start off by saying that uh, it is um, a continue, continuation of the work that has, uh, you know, that has been done. We're building on that, uh, on that uh, work. So it is, um, let me just hear from Natsiki whether it is, uh, you know, that information, we, we have that already. Natsiki? Thank you, and thank you, Leticia, for the question. Um, as it indicates, it is a continuation of the project. Um, however, uh, the information that we are currently requesting is for individual mines TMM uh, population, and that was not uh, part of the, the information that they had requested previously. Uh, this information will go into um, the, the project that Sita mentioned, which has 17 web packages, it's an initial step in, in kickstarting that particular extension into the work that DACE has done. Thanks. Thanks for the clarity. Then uh, one other thing, um, with our trial and where we um, hit a brick wall, Caterpillar does not have an interface for the CAT 966 and CAT 980. Um, they came to visit us from overseas twice at our Glen Douglas mine, and we just don't get a commitment from the OEM when will the interface be ready. So we can't even test on our equipment the, the um, CAS unit from the supplier we've selected um, because the OEM is not pulling their weight and we don't have enough leverage. We've got like two CAT 988 and 966s. So we are held ransom because we're tiny and not getting commitment from the OEM. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Leticia, for that. I just a um, uh, few observations in terms of that. I mean, if you look in our presentation, we 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 do recognize that there is a you know, there is a wide range of uh, levels of commitment and involvement from the from the various um, you know OEMs, and I think what we we certainly would um, are going to be doing as part of the the, the project uh, that was mentioned is to actually make sure that we engage these uh, these OEMs in a in a collaborative manner. Um, so that, um, you know, like you say, it is not just one individual company with each number of machines that uh, is uh, focusing on this issue, but that it is, um, you know, for the whole industry. And that's why we, and as part of the, the um, that leadership forum that we're looking at, where we're going to look at uh, the, the OEM suppliers, um, it's the ones that are local, as well as the those that are, local, um, are globally based, that we in, involve them in the in the forum and and see how can we resolve these uh, these kind of things. 
But it is absolutely crucial. This is the kind of information that we, you know, desperately, desperately need. Um, because there's, you know, plenty of mixed messages that go out. Uh, some people say it's all ready to go and they can do it tomorrow and or they've already done it. And then there's uh, all these different challenges uh, that that we become aware of. So, so please, if if that information can also be conveyed uh, to to us, then um, you know, in that way, you help us to actually help you deal with uh, the challenges. Okay, Anthony, and then Gert. Hi, good morning, Sitsa. Um, just a, I have a, a, quest, a question and a few comments. Uh, my question is just referring back to the uh, fatalities and injuries uh, regarding TMMs. How many of our of those fatalities that are recorded on your statistics are actually from Aspasa members? Katlejo, I don't know if you can uh, ask that, uh, answer that. Uh, have we got that specific detail? Um, Peter, I just need to check the Excel sheet. Maybe if I can get a minute or two, we can carry on with the other questions. I should be able to give this. Okay. Thanks. And then just to move on uh, on the comments, uh, following on what Leticia said, and we've all, most of us in the industry, have been talking to each other quite seriously about T uh, PDS. Uh, the OEMs are, are very reluctant in general to, to provide interfaces, especially if we need to go to a level nine. Um, they don't want to give it, and if they are, some that have indicated they'll give it, it the, the cost is absolutely exorbitant. We, it, the industry simply cannot afford to, to invest that sort of money, definitely not in the quarrying business. Um, and then a comment I have, we did a trial here at, at our quarry in, in Nelspreet with PDS, and uh, we've got a traffic management system in, in, in place, which Ntiki and them helped us do very kindly. Um, without your proper traffic management system, your PDS is really not very uh, effective at all, and that was uh, the findings that we made from this. So I would strongly recommend to everybody in the industry, get your, your traffic management plans in place and you're going to see your risk is reduced tremendously. Thanks, Sitsa, that's all I've got. Sitsa, are you still there? Sorry, um, <clears throat> no, I was just saying, Anthony, thank you very much for that. I. Um, you know, I think you just speak to the uh, the holistic risk phased uh, approach that we we also advocating from uh, from our side. So fully fu fully support uh, that. Gert, uh, comment from your side. Uh, Sita, I just have one question. Um, the uh, docu or the verification from the UP um, test results. When was this um, done, and will it be evaluated on a monthly or a quarterly basis? Um, as most of the testings will be done, uh, or some of the testings will be done um, basically like constantly. So there's constant uh, updates on testing to be done. Siki, I see you've got your hand up. Can you please respond to that? Yes, just in response to that, the report that I, flag, uh, I flighted is a report from the UP that we received for the third of the, the, it was the latest update for the 3rd of October last year, and they did indicate that they had lined up a test uh, at one other mine in the same month. So we will need to keep updating um, the, 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 the report as we go throughout the year, as they are conducting various other tests throughout the year. Thank you very much. That's all from me. Thank you very much, uh, Gert. Adrian? Yeah, Zilze, uh, just from my side, I'm, I'm with Leticia at AFIMAT, and uh, what I'm experiencing is there's still, uh, in this time, a lot of the DMR guys arriving on site and, and actually threatening the guys uh, who hasn't fitted uh, uh, the collision systems onto their machines, you know, and, and really taking a, 
a bullying situation towards us on even some of the smaller mines. So there's definitely not coherence in the industry of what is the current situation. Um, in the same sentence, on some of the places where we did fit uh, this, uh, the um, stuff with, uh, um, which is not obviously interfering with the machine's operation, uh, but it's more frustration of keeping the system going, you know, because it's so undependable and, and actually interfering with production more than what it's, it is actually a help. And, and the sad case is that on those same mines, a lot of money has been seen, uh, spent to traffic management. Yeah, no, thank you very much for that, uh, Adrian. I, um, I can just, uh, you know, say we, we hear you loud and clear, and, uh, and that is why it's absolutely critical that we get this information also to identify the areas where, um, you know, there's not consistency in the, in the approach. Um, you know, we, we need to get that uh, information through to, to our team and, um, to make sure that we can deal with these issues as part of the uh, the, the holistic uh, risk phased approach. Anthony, I see you've got your hand up again, Gert and Adrian. I uh, I don't know if yours are sticky hands, as we now call them. Then we no no longer call them old hands. <laughs> Anthony, over to you. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. It's a mine's not a sticky hand. <laughs> um, just to pick up on 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 the previous comment there. I think people need to understand that a traffic management system is not a once-off installation. It is definitely an ongoing thing, and it, and it requires management, it requires monitoring, and it requires a, a continual upgrade. It, it's a living, it's a living plan, and and people need to have a really need to be committed to that in order for it to be successful. Um, what we found in the industry, in some places, people tell you they've got a, a f implemented traffic management plan, and it really, you know, a few white stones on a quarry is not going to cut it. You, you've really got to get stuck in and do it properly. And there is fantastic help from from Antiki and, and them, and and I mean, use it doesn't cost you anything. You know, that's uh, guys, please let's let's get cracking and get the DMR off our backs. Thank you very much for that, uh, Anthony, Leticia. So, um, is there going to be another opportunity for a process to be followed like we did with TACE? Um, because I know only three ASPASA members went that route and it helped considerably with the technical aspects of acquiring such units. Thank you, uh, Stanford. Do you want to uh, respond to that in terms of our plans on the uh, on the project? Yeah, thanks, uh, Sitze, and thanks, Leticia, for the for the question. Yes, in terms of the some of the kind of of, of assistance or support that we we will um, will will provide. It's in relation to bilateral interactions with, with companies where there is a need for those, as well as maybe having uh, interest group sessions um, where a few uh, companies come together and we discuss uh, the, the, the pain points and the successes so that we can, we can share the learnings across. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Anthony. I don't know your uh, sticky hand or uh, a new hand. Sorry, a sticky hand. It's a... <laughs> okay. Okay, colleagues. Uh, I see we're almost out of time, and we uh, we've um, <clears throat> had some very good uh, good uh, discussion on. Uh, on this whole issue that is so uh, so important uh, to all of us, first of all, because of the safety reasons, um, but also then uh, the implications that it may have uh, in in terms of affecting livelihoods and viability uh, of mines. So I think the the message from our side is just loud and clear that we we certainly here to to assist. 
um, assist you in whatever way we can. Um, you know whether it is assistance with the with the traffic management uh, um, adoption of those uh, of that leading practice, whether it is about the the um, advocacy part or whether it is about the the testing of the collision avoidance uh, system, the engagement with the OEMs, all those uh, all those things. Um, you know we we are committed to to assist all our members in in that regard. But we cannot do that without, um, you know, the the support from the from the members, uh, you know, in getting the right uh, information. Um, and it's not only about the, uh, the TMM population. That information is ob obviously a priority for us. And and as uh, um, Stanford has has pleaded that we urgently need that information, we can send the, the template template around again. But I think it is also this information about, um, you know, what are the challenges that are being experienced and, and those kind of things, you know, that we have those those open lines of uh, communication. And as Stanford said, you know, if one has to set up a, a interest group that can can touch base on a regular basis on how things are going, all those things are uh, are possible for for us to do. But um, you know, if we we need that uh, assistance from your side as well in terms of the the information, and you know, we we really look forward to to working with you in this uh, in this journey. It's an important issue for for all of us, and um, I think just together and collaboratively, that's uh, the best way in which we we uh, can deal. So I really just want to thank you again for uh, a very, um, you know, good good participation, attendance, your time, and um, we really look forward to to now receiving the information that we 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 um, we have, and we'll uh, send that out uh, again, and then hopefully get that uh, information. Nico, I don't know if there's any uh, closing comments from, from your side uh, before we close the meeting. Nico, anything uh, from your side? Um, is it so well? Nico is coming up. I see Marty is asking a question and that we did the risk um, process, risk assessment process with uh, Mitacom. And if that is um, acceptable, but I think there's a confusion here. There's two risk assessments you need. One is traffic management related, which is the adoption of traffic management and surface mines. And one is the TMM risk evaluation to determine your, your, your need for level seven to nine. So it's two separate risk assessments, to my understanding. And Siki, do you want to come in on that? Yes, I think Leticia responded uh, very well to, to that. Um, so the industry developed risk assessment that MITACOM assisted with is uh, specifically to assess the need for technology on site. Um, but what we are encouraging is the initial one that Leticia mentioned to do a traffic flow and risk analysis um, for the sake of correcting the traffic management on your site before you can even consider the technology. So, so that one supersedes um, the, the one for the technology requirement. Thanks. OK, colleagues, uh, I don't see Nico uh, coming uh, back on the video uh, screen. I, uh, so next step for us is to make sure that you get that uh, template uh, again. Um, Tsiki and Stanford will, will make sure that that gets to the office. And then uh, if we can please ask you to, to complete that. Um, Nico, I see you, you back on the screen. Thank you. So sorry, I don't know. Power cut me off twice now. I uh, just want to say thanks for uh, coming and explaining this. What I want to suggest is send the forms to us, and I want to propose if the members are happy and if you're happy, that maybe in, let's say, April, we have another session of this same type of thing, and maybe people will come up and can let us have problems, questions, comments beforehand, and then we are trying to try and address it. 
I must just say, we, we as us Falls have done a huge amount of work with TACE. We went to Glenn Douglas three, three years ago. We got a huge amount of reports, which we will forward to you. They, they were all done and so forth. Just to also uh, share with you, we have not in the last five years had any fatalities at any of our spousal members. So uh, we fatality free, um, and TMM was five years ago at PPC Moy Plus. That was the last time. So thanks for you, and, and we will talk to each other and set up maybe March, April, another similar type of, because the members need to know it, and if I tell them, they don't normally believe me. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, Nico. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, as part of members. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Zitz. Have a good day. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.